Good morning everyone, welcome to another vlog here on the World of Coasters. Today we are here at Capri World. Um, we're on our UK mega trip at the moment and uh, we've done loads of theme parks but on the way back to West Midlands Safari Park we're just going to nip into Capri's World. Um, see what they're doing. I was really the interested to of see... my room. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was really interested to see uh, what they're implementing for social distancing and all that here because it's all enclosed, it's all an inside thing. You've always had to pre-book tickets but just off the bat I'm really impressed with how they're working. Like, Excellent. Excellent. Considering so, apparently Birmingham is high risk, they are super on it here. But anyway, uh, just to show you off the bat, when you come through the door, you get your temperature taken via thermal cameras, which you don't have to do anything for. They you just didn't even pass. tell you, they're just like... Oh. And then uh, you get given a wristband, so you've been temperature checked for the day, and uh, you come in, and there are literally little spots everywhere for you to stand. They've got their hand sanitizers everywhere, which is good to see, and as you obviously saw when we come in, they've got screens up absolutely everywhere. Now, we're just waiting for our time slot to come up, which is in 10 minutes' time. We're going at half past. We came here last last year and it was rammed in here wasn't it? was it? so busy. And I was, I, I, said to, I, said, I said to Louise, do you reckon it's going to be rammed in here? Are they going to take the mickey? But it's happy, so they're a world known brand. They can't be seen, you know, be skimping. So I'm really impressed with how they're doing it. Obviously you've got to wear a mask in the building. You've got to wear it properly, not over your, not like down on your nose like this. Yeah, I'm going to be sad because I can't just eat the chocolate whilst we're walking around. That's now. another thing. And you, I can't smell it like right there. And you're not allowed to go into the shop until the end of the tour. So the one way. Yeah, well, there's a screen in the way, isn't there? You can't get through to the shop, so the shop is at the end of the tour. So anyway, we're going to go into the into the experience. Obviously, if you've seen the vlog already, it's not going to be too different, but I think it'd be quite interesting to see how they've changed things with, co um, obviously, coronavirus. And uh, we'll see you when we get in to Cabri's World. So when you come into Cabri's World, we had to pay a pound for this bag. But it's you so didn't have to pay for one, though. It's adorable. Look what's in it, though, Lou. Your free chocolate, and they give you a little handful to begin with. I don't so, really like Curly Welly, so look at Obviously, you've got to wear a mask in here, so, you know, don't um, don't go around eating your chocolate. You've got to, like, wait until you're in there where you can eat it. chocolate in here. Oh, did you? Yeah. You've got to keep your mask on. But I have to, like... Drop it in. Sneak it in. <laughs> anyway, now we're in here, I'll give you the grand tour around. Of course, they've got um, social distancing markers all over the floor, which is good to see. The touch screens are still in use. Um, they won't be. But they are, no. there, there is a sign that says they are sanitised uh, frequently throughout the day. Um, like, like Louise said, we'll probably avoid touching them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so fresh and clean in here. And it's a breath of fresh air to come in here when it's so quiet. We are the beginning of our group, but yeah. we're probably going to let everyone just overtake us yeah. um, as we go through. Like we're going to go through the history of chocolate. So obviously we're in the Aztec. Um, we're in an Aztec tribe at the moment, uh, 600 AD, where they've ground up cocoa and mix it with spices and all that, uh, and drink it. And here we've got um, we've got a like translation as what cocoa beans we use. They were used as currency. And if you'd paid extra, you can uh, listen to an audio description about it. So a human was worth quite a lot of beans. A rabbit, on the other hand, Lou, is only worth 10 yeah, cocoa like beans. Too. And I have just noticed something with these touch screens is they're actually running the, um, the stuff without having to touch it, which is good. Um, so it's actually doing the touch screen aspect without you needing to touch it. So here are when the uh, Spaniards came over and they discovered chocolate or cocoa because when cocoa was first introduced it wasn't the sweet treat that we know it as it was uh, it was it had chili and all that it's in gone. it that little thing that was a little frog that, that, that was just a, like a side game they had at the time so the good thing about these is when you walk over to them they obviously have triggers so you can watch them from the start which is good to see just going through the history of how chocolate came to the western world senorita un poquito chocolate just as I suspect, my fellow countrymen absolutely adore the taste of chocolate. Just look around, everyone is drinking it. Is this the same recipe originally enjoyed by the Aztecs? We have changed the recipe by replacing the chili pepper and by adding other spices. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and by adding sugar. 
We kept chocolate a closely guarded secret for over 100 years until the daughter of King Philip II of Spain married King Louis XIII of France and took the secret with her to the French court. So one thing for sure, with it being so quiet, you can really take your time to enjoy all these like like small um, dioramas, really good holographs on these. Uh, looks like this is the one where it comes to England. Ah, here we go. Chocolate and cocoa arrived in England under Cromwell, but didn't gain popularity until the restoration of King Charles II, when it became popular both at court and with the wealthy. Samuel Pepys, the famous diarist, wrote of it the day after the coronation of Charles II. Wait in the morning with my head in a sad taking through last night's drink, which I am sorry for. So rose and went out with Mr. Creed to drink our morning draught, which he gave me chocolate to settle my stomach. Good to see here, social distancing. There's also this clock up here which will show you when the next showing is. It shows you about the history of Cadbury's. Five minutes left. Where I set up my business in 1824 to trade tea and coffee. I also sold cocoa leaves. I prepared myself. Chocolate and coffee beans. These drinks were considered as wholesome alternatives to alcohol, which we as Quakers strongly disapprove. George introduced many benefits for the workforce, such as half-day holidays, the sick club, and many improvements in the factory. And Richard, your new designs for our packaging were a huge success. Well, we had to try something different, just to get ourselves recognized, Father, as we were still a small company. I remember it was a struggle. But with everyone's hard work, we managed to turn things around. Our aim was to manufacture only the highest quality cocoa and chocolate. I know, but I could tell you some stories of less scrupulous producers who added brick dust to their cocoa. Ours was still gritty, but we only added sugar to take away the bitter taste and starch to absorb the fat. However, George had heard of a new kind of cocoa press. He went to Holland in 1866, saw the press being used and brought one back. The Van Houten Press. Oh yes, Father. You see, because we could extract more of the cocoa butter, there was no need for more additives. Not only was our, our cocoa essence more palatable, but also output increased. We became the only company in England that could produce such a pure cocoa essence. As the company grew, and our sons joined the business to take over the day-to-day -day management, George was able to devote more time to developing Bournemouth Village. We bought more land and built new houses, a hospital, schools, churches, and many other facilities, not just for our employees, but for the whole community. As we approached the 20th century, we launched many new brands, including assortments and fancy chocolates. I sent my son George to Switzerland to find out how chocolate was made using fresh milk. Soon after, Cadbury were able to manufacture chocolate with a much higher milk content that rivaled even the best Swiss products. That was when we launched our most important new brand. We called it Cadbury's Dairy Milk. It became so popular with its distinctive taste that sales exceeded all our best expectations. In the next show now, it's good to see that actually sanitizing in between shows properly with the proper spray from No, like them. itching to go Yeah, in they couldn't I don't think they have much time. And welcome to this hot and sunny cocoa farm. Cocoa beans are grown all around the world in tropical countries near the equator, where there is plenty of sunshine and moisture to help them grow. 
best cocoa beans are grown here in Ghana. Cocoa, or Theobroma cacao, is the most important ingredient in making Cadbury chocolate. It is the cocoa that gives chocolate its distinctive taste. Our story starts over there, where you can see a father and his team planting our young cocoa trees. Hello there! Did you know it's going to take another five years before those trees will grow to maturity and the ripe cocoa pods can be harvested? Look, there are some ripe cocoa pods. You can tell they are ripe by their golden yellow colour. Well, come on, let's go and have a look. Once each pod has been plucked, it is cut open so that all of the beans and sticky pulp can be scooped out to be fermented in a heap and then dried in the hot sun until they've turned a rich brown colour. There are up to 40 beans in each pod. This is known as the fermentation process and is how the distinctive chocolate flavour starts to develop. Once the beans are dried, they are tested for their quality before being loaded onto a cargo ship to be transported to England. They are then taken to our factory in Chirk for processing. Now, first the beans must be sorted and physically cleaned to remove any stones, dust and string that have come across with the beans from Africa. This is done using a street of eggs and by passing the beans over vibrating sieves. The raw cocoa beans are now pasteurized using very hot steam. This is done in small batches using special enclosed containers that rotate so that all the beans are evenly passed through the steam. The clean cocoa beans are now taken to be roasted in revolving tubular gas-fired ovens. As each oven rotates, the cocoa beans are slowly and gently roasted as they tumble through a flow of hot air. This whole process is very carefully controlled as roasting gives the beans their characteristic flavour and aroma. The nibs are now ground up in large mills. This process generates heat which helps to transform the nibs into a thick chocolate coloured liquid called cocoa liquor or mass. Is the basis of all our chocolate and cocoa products. Some cocoa liquor is taken to our factory at Marlborough for further processing. The rest of the liquor is pressed to extract the cocoa butter. This is achieved using a special spinner in which the cocoa liquor is compressed under very high pressures so that the cocoa butter is squeezed out and filtered until it's in its purest form. The refined cocoa butter is now taken to Bourneville, where we will catch up with it later. Meanwhile, the cocoa liquor that has been taken to Marlbrook is pumped into storage tanks, ready to be turned into chocolate crumb. Over 150 tonnes of sugar and 500,000 litres of fresh full cream milk are delivered to Marlbrook every day to be used in this process. But first, the milk must be pasteurised and then evaporated to remove most of the water before sugar can be added to produce a sweetened condensed milk. The liquid milk and sugar solution is now heated again before the cocoa liquor from Chirk is added and thoroughly mixed to create a thick paste. The paste is then squeezed between steam heated rollers under a huge vacuum, causing the paste to turn into a powder. The resulting crumb is scraped from the rollers, dried in a flow of hot air, and blown into storage silos. The crumb is now taken to Bourneville in tankers, where it is ground and mixed into a paste with this, the cocoa butter, which came from Chirk earlier. The paste is then refined into a flake before being conched or mixed to form a liquid chocolate. This liquid chocolate is used to make all famous milk chocolate products. So we've just come out from the two shows and we've entered the area called manufacturing where they just show you how each product is made or certain products. For example, they used to, last, last year you could press each individual product, but this year, because of obviously coronavirus, they've got rid of it and this one just shows the roses being made. And uh, this one over here is doing buttons. 
and I think yeah, cream eggs over there. So this one doesn't really affect like how it works. Obviously, before you had multiple people looking at a screen, Louise is already on the chocolate. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I say, you used to be able to come along here and be like roses, cream egg, all in one. So now you kind of have to wait for each individual screen. But as you can see, it's really quiet. So in the previous part, um, you probably saw there was only six groups per showing, which was good. You know, social distancing is good and they had really good cleaning in between. They were clean in between shows. Now we're just going to make our way through manufacturing, have a look at how some of the products are made. The eggs then go into a cooler for 45 minutes. Everyone's favourite Cadbury's product. And if that isn't your favourite product, put down in the comments what is your favourite Cadbury's product. Because uh, mine is personally the cream egg. It's just so good. So as I've already said before, because it's only six groups, you literally have this whole area to yourself. I remember last time it was quite busy through here, and I really enjoyed this experience last time when it was busy. So the fact that we can take our time and go through each screen um, just makes it all the better. What they're making here? Easter eggs. Easter eggs. Mm. So through here for the toilets, you can't use these ones anymore. They're closed, but the toilets upstairs, and you can't cross over. Uh, but obviously, we've got the green screens and the cadabra to go. Um, still, there's social distancing markers all the way through, and uh, hand sanitizer stations everywhere. Just so you can see as well, like when we came here last time, this car park was rammed, um, and we were actually in the car park right up the front, which is really small. And uh, obviously, later on, here's the outside area where the 4D cinema is, which we'll be visiting later. So, a great thing is. Uh, these screens actually make it even better than before because it was just like barriers before so you physically know where you're meant to be going uh, and the other good thing is there's no queue for the Kadabra ride so yeah. we queued like a good half an hour for that it's last night um, it's just a small dark ride but yeah we're going to have a look around the green screens this kind of goes through all the history of the chocolate like their packaging and all that and uh, it hasn't been updated in a little while, 2005. So here we've got a temporary machine, which is how they temper the chocolate. Uh, it normally is rotating, gives a really nice chocolatey smell, but they've got it turned off at the moment. And uh, this one was used between 1920 and 1950. I'm just absolutely loving how quiet it is. It's like, it probably won't take as long as last time, but we're, we're getting to look at exactly what we want to look at. Um, I can only imagine what it's like when it's busy, but if everyone's following these social distancing markers, that's all good. Uh, they're doing some refurbishments along here, so it's got these high walls up. And we're going to be coming into the area where you could temper and wipe with chocolate in a minute. So it'd be quite interesting as to what they're doing in that place, because surely they can't be running that unless they're asking you to sanitise between. I think they've got demonstrations by the looks of it. So here we go. Chocolate demonstration uses only. Please don't eat the chocolate. That's a hard one, that. Streets are 
homemade chocolate. You can have a go at yourselves now at right <coughs> the top of the next table. So we just like to follow the corridor around. Right? Enjoy, guys. Right, so Louise is writing in chocolate. Oh, it's making a lot of bubbles. So along here they give you a bottle which has been sanitised for the chocolate and uh, you get to write in the chocolate. Louise writes in the Let someone else there. have a go. And, uh, So far, I'm very impressed with uh, with this experience. Like we enjoyed it fully last time. So, as I said before, the fact that it's so quiet is just making it even better. Uh, now we're going through to the green screen area, which is where you get your pictures. We bought the picture last time, didn't we? Didn't we? I don't think we buy it this time, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go get our picture taken. Not on the Cadbury's coaster this time, the Crunchy coaster. Oh, I don't know. But that's to find a backdrop. But they've got. Um, Screens up. It looks like it's had a bit of a lick of paint and looks a bit fresher. But uh, yeah, running time three minutes shows you how all their uh, products are made. From cocoa beans to chocolate bar. Here okay, they've got all the chocolates and Louise's favourite here. Marvellous creations. Oh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, Cabbage Cream Egg Twists and Whispers. Um, but just to show how quiet it is compared to last time, we queued for all of this. And I'm pretty sure last time this wall wasn't here. Um, so we're going to go choose our background and get a picture taken, we can soak with the flake, we can personalise a bar and then we're going to be going through to Cadabra so let's go get our picture taken. Right so the green screen is a bit simpler than last time, last time you could do it with props and like yeah so you had like these signs and like bits but obviously with Covid we aren't able to do that um, so it's a bit more plain. I don't think we'll bother getting the picture for it this time, um, as it's just a plain picture in the flake bath. But now we're off to our favourite part of the whole tri uh, trip, other than the shop, uh, and that is going into the Cadaver ride, which is just through here. Um, a small dark ride which goes through the building. Sadly, the ice cream factory is closed at the moment, but I imagine during busier times it is open. It was closed last time when we came here as well, wasn't it? So yeah, we'll see you over by the Cadabra ride. So we're on the Cadabra ride now. So and quiet. It looks like it's had a lick of paint. So just enjoy the ride, guys. Like this might have had a bit of TLC since last time. Um, looking very fresh, plenty of little cocoa beans dancing around. Um, and uh, yeah, there's obviously socially distanced here, but we didn't have to queue to get on the ride. And we're not in Bourneville anymore, we're going to be entering Beanville. Capri's Gorilla advert through there. So 
that's the only ride we're going to be doing today. Well, actually, we're going to a 4D cinema, which is just outside, but I do love that dark ride. It's so immersive, and uh, it's, just, it's just quite good to look through. So anyway, we're heading down now to the next part of the tour, which is like uh, chocolate tasting, apparently, so we said when we got off. And uh, we've also got a picture of uh, ourselves on the Cadabra ride, which we'll uh, have a look at. In fact, it looks like it's going to be here. In fact, I can just see it there of us sitting in the back. What? We've got a souvenir penny, penny press, which uh, looks pretty cool, but we don't have a pound left because I just spent a pound on that little My carry bag. Well. And uh, there is a pound down here, but somehow, I don't know what's happened, but it's, it's fallen through the chute. That's a pretty cool Cadabra one. Again, we get another shot of the outside area, uh, which we'll be in later. So we're now entering chocolate making, which is where we get to taste chocolate. And it looks like they're still running this one, which is good. So you get a little cup of melted chocolate and then you choose two treats on top. So you're going to see us stuffing our faces in a minute with some chocolate. Again, it's looking very fresh along here, like they've done some work to it. Impressive chocolate artwork and some of the moulding. This is also the area where you do the chocolate making if you paid extra for it, but obviously at the moment they aren't running it. Um, but you can see here they're making some of the products for the shop, including the um, little uh, cocoa beans, which are just being spun so they're evenly distributed throughout their moulds. I want to drop it. So normally they have the conveyor belt going, but obviously at the moment they can't have it running, so they make it for you. So we've got our little cups of chocolate here, which is absolutely dead in here, so we can just find a corner and sample the chocolate. Get some chocolate out of the mould. What do you think, Lee? First, first bite. Well, I know exactly what this is going to taste amazing. It smells amazing. Right, so now we've had our chocolate treat and oh my god it's just maybe one more. Uh, they've got like a display table here which they normally would show how to temper chocolate. Uh, we saw that demonstration earlier. And, uh, yeah look at this. Oh look at that. Oh, that's just naughty. That is naughty. And then this is the end product here. The thing is, they've got it planned out perfectly. They give you a little sample of chocolate now, and we're not far from the shop, and yeah. I love chocolate. So uh, they're just packaging chocolate in there. And uh, then they have some displays of the chocolate here. But yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna buy chocolate. I love, I love Cadbury's chocolate. Uh, the good thing is it also tells you some of the prices and stuff in the shop. So you can get yourself a Premier League sized football of chocolate for $14.99. <laughs> well, you always want it. Yeah, why not? So the great thing is, because we've separated from our group, we're kind of just ahead of the group behind us, and we've got no one around us, which is brilliant. Um, so we can just kind of enjoy it at our own leisure. So there's the group behind us that are just coming around now. And our group in front just went zooming through this experience. Um, obviously, we like to take our time and uh, have a look at all the chocolatey goodness. Now we're entering like the advertising area. This is my favourite. This bit. is a pretty oh, cool the area. They have a full animatronic of the gorilla and all that, and uh, we give full details showing all of it because so we can actually go up to all the windows and see some of the old packaging. So down here you get to relive some of the old adverts that Cadbury's have brought out. Obviously Cadbury's are renowned for their iconic adverts. Uh, my personal favourite being the drumming gorilla. Uh, obviously you've got the crunchy coaster and uh, the eyebrow one. Uh, I don't know what that one's exactly called but with the kids with the eyebrows. Um, but yeah they do some brilliant advertising and um, you can see all of them down here. So old adverts and some more holograms here. As we enter Cadbury Street. Okay, I'll line up a 
special treat for you live. We got this Let's one. go bananas for my furry friend who needs no introduction. <laughs> And now we're coming through to the last room of the tour uh, before we go to the outside section. Oh, which is just like a massive play and interactive area. Uh, you've obviously got some, um, well, they're not licorice, all sorts of sweet um, things, and then some interactive things on the floor. So if you tread on the, the treats, Lou, they disappear. So it's like, live it, you're falling in, you're lost. Go on, okay, use the bridge. Oh, look at that. You nearly fell in. And then over here, you've got some interactive games where you can grow coca trees and all that. And uh, I think there was a photo opportunity here, but they have uh, since taken it out. So here you get to grow your cocoa. That's the sanitize. Work those thighs, sanitize. And I plant my seed, so it's in the ground. Now I need to do my wind and my rain. So hold on, let me get this on. You've been here for quite a while. So that's the end of the tour now. We're going through the gates into the actual shop. And this shop, I'm like, we end up spending loads of money now. The thing is, normally you'd be able to come in this shop as many times as you want, but you need to do your shopping before because you won't be able to get back in afterwards. You'll have to have a ticket to come in this building. Um, so just to show you some of the deals, uh, like sold immediately, Lou, five pounds for one of these giant bars really like chocolate of chocolate. So I think I might grab one of these. Um, we can get three for four pound twenty on the two hundred gram bars. So yeah, let's have a look around the shop. So in here, they've got some of the stuff that will be made upstairs, uh, which they've actually got. But I want to get one free on the lollies. So if you're a chocoholic, this store is deadly. Like I've never seen this shop so empty. Um, we'll have a proper look around. More chocolate over there. So there's plenty of merch here. Uh, obviously. Some Capri's cream egg pillows, fifteen pounds for these. See, last time we came in here, I ended up getting a T-shirt from over there. It's all pretty well priced as well. And uh, some drinking chocolate here. Got plenty of little Cadbury's knickknacks here, including your sewn patches. Uh, sadly, no pins though, from what I can see. Uh, would have really liked a Cadbury's World pin. So this is the lethal part of the shop because you. So you can get an entire box of these, which are the ones the shops get, um, for £2.49, which saves you nearly 20 quid. Um, it's normally because they the best before dates are coming out, which is the end of the year. So uh, that's a really good deal there. That's, that's brilliant. So you get that like, damaged stuff in here, so you can get yourself one of the teapots for £3. Is that one meant to be there? I don't know. 
yourself a bag of misshapes here for £3.99. Uh, these have your misshapen pieces of uh, cabri bits, so anything that didn't go through the machine, they bag up and they sell it here. Ten for one pound seventy, or you can get sixty an entire box of Freddo bars for nine pounds. Some of the out season Christmas stuff here, including a vintage roses tin there for eight ninety nine. This shop is lethal. Come when you've eaten. So for six pounds, you can get yourself a premium face mask from Capri's Wells, which all the staff are wearing, and they do look pretty good. So we've been here about 10 minutes and we've filled a basket up with probably just over 20 pounds worth of stuff. Yeah, I, I picked that up because uh, it's got some really sweet recipes in it. And uh, enough chocolate to feed the family for ages. Right, so we've just come out of the shop and uh, our tour is over. We just spent 25 pounds in the shop on various bits. We got quite a lot though, didn't we though? Yeah, they're not giving out free chocolate around the tour anymore. They give you six bars. At the beginning at and the that's beginning. it. Um, but yeah, it's well worth the money and we're not even over yet. So we're going outside to where the 4D cinema is now and that's a really good experience in itself, isn't it though? Yeah. So when you come out of the building, you turn to the right and uh, then you go down the side and there's a little outdoor section with a few exhibitions. Here we go, the 4D chocolate adventure. To apologise for the wind, but it should die down in a minute when I get down the bottom of this hill. So along here they've got the uh, very clear keep to the right along here. And uh, you need to have your ticket to go beyond this point, of which uh, they normally check, but it doesn't look like they are at the moment. Uh, where we'll be doing the 4D cinema, we'll probably get out of the way first and have a look at the experiences around there. So here's the food options down here. Sadly, like I say, the cap is shut, which means we can only eat down here, and then we're going to go into the 4D cinema. Right, so out here there's, like I say, just a few little activities to do. Uh, the main one being the 4D Chocolate Adventure, which is a fully immersive um, like 4D cinema experience. Last time we came here, Lou, we were queuing for all of this, weren't we? Yeah. It was absolutely mental and it looks like we're going to be near as damn walking on it. As you can see from the signage, you can wait for quite a while to get on this. Obviously guys, there's going to be no filming allowed on the 4D cinema, so uh, we'll see you when we get out from the 4D cinema. experience and I've got to say them seats in there are amazing. They're like way beyond up 40. They're like they're, you probably could maybe see from the shot I took before it started. They're freestanding seats and uh, they literally till pitch and everything. Uh, plus the 3D's done really well on there. So we've just come 4D. out 4D even sorry is done really well. Um, so we're out now in this area here um, and I found are these like touch screens or something? Let's have a look. Yeah, touch screen, so it'll be like blip, 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 blip. So these have all been clean, there's no fingerprints on them, but there is also the opportunity for me to hand sanitize over there. So we've come into the meet and greet and uh, come here to meet Caramel Bunny. Louise loves meeting bunnies, so. Yeah. Okay, so they've got the lines out here. So obviously, I think this is a little bit tucked away, the meet and greet area here, because we didn't see it last time, did we, when we came here? It's quite funny when we went in there, obviously Caramel Bunny was waiting out the back and uh, the, the, the member of staff had to go get her. But throughout the day, they have different characters coming out, uh, including Freddo and um, Bertie Bassett and all that. So that's interesting to see, there's the times down there. So we're now in the Bourneville experience, which tells you about the village of Bourneville. They were doing a lot of work to it last time we came here, but you can see um, like people who founded Bourneville, which are obviously uh, the Cabri family, and uh, tells you all about you know the village. So the floor marking show. There's a one-way system going around this building, and 
and uh, we're going to have a look at the uh, the Bourneville village. We've actually got an entire model of the the area. It shows all the original housing for it, and obviously the Cadbury's factory here. So here we've got some of the collectible toy cars and all that. Louise has actually got one of these. You've got the little Capri's wagon in the middle here. The... It's not very rare. It no, just looks it cool. It does look pretty cool. There's lots of old memorabilia here. I do remember having some of these vans as children. But I had the, uh, the Buttons one uh, back here. Uh, this one and I can't remember the exact one but I did have a tanker of some description it was a small one though I think it might have been this one not entirely sure so much merchandise over the years it's all so well looked after So that's all the outdoor experience is now done. So to be honest, that's all we can do here really. So we'll get back to the car and then we'll give you a full review on what we think of the experience and um, say goodbye. Right, so that's it. Um, that's Cadbury's World. I am very impressed with how they are dealing with all the social distancing and all that in there. They were like, brilliant. That was the main reason for us going. We went there last year and it was brilliant then. Uh, the social distancing is being handled so well in there. Um, like even even just general people in there were, were we got lucky but people were social yeah. distancing and I think the crowd levels are just about right in there. Um, but yeah, we've uh, we've definitely got a few little trees, haven't we? Though. Yeah. Got, Louise is already having a look through the recipe book we bought. Um, but yeah, if you're like looking at coming here and you're a bit worried about their like how they're doing with um, their COVID secureness, um, it's perfect. Just you know, book your time slot. You had to book your time slot for this anyway, so just make sure you book a time slot. Bring some hand sanitizer and a face mask, and you're all good to go. If you enjoyed the video, guys, by all means leave a like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to us, and uh, we'll. We'll see you in the next video, which should be at the West Midland Safari Park. A new park. Bye. Bye.